Hey, welcome back to the shop. It's really good to see you here again. And if you haven't had a chance to, I would encourage you, please subscribe, especially if you're interested in model airplane building, because that's what we're doing here. And, you know, I've only got like five subscribers so far. We don't have a lengthy interview process, not at this point anyways. So please hit the subscribe button down below here and the bell, and you will be notified every time that I put a new video up. And we've been shooting for about every week at this point. And uh, we're getting down to the part where the fun begins, you see, because I got all of the parts cut out. We now have a completely cut kit ready to go. And this is great because now the tedious hard work of scratch building is pretty much behind us. Oh, look who just showed up. Yes, the tedious part, the messiest part is behind us, and that's the cutting of all the parts out. When you start off with just plain wood, you gotta get all the parts transferred, and it takes some time to get the parts cut out. We had it pretty easy with this particular plan, though, because this plane is all straight edges. I mean, if you look at every single part, there's one there, here's another one. Everything has got straight lines in it. There's really no complex curves or anything like that. This is a pretty easy kit to make. Another thing is, is it's got a constant cord wing in it, which means every rib all the way through the wing is identical. So from the inside of the wing all the way to the outside, you're using one rib and it makes it super easy as far as duplication because then all you have to do is Put the one rib down on top of a whole stack of wood and i did you know the, these two stacks here they've got 12 in each one pretty cool it goes very quickly so if you're looking for a quick and easy kit to put together or an easy plan to put together i couldn't recommend uh this plan more than than i have does that make any sense i would recommend that you pick this plan because it is just it's so basic and easy to set up um, very easy to understand and very easy to cut out. So there's, uh, I have been putting the place where you can get this plan on the internet uh, down below. And, uh, you know, feel free to go ahead and look that one up and print one off for yourself and build it if you're interested. So now that we're ready to get started, there is three major components to most scratch building. There's the wing, there's the fuselage, and there's the tail feathers, the uh, stabilizer and fin area that you could start on. The nice thing is, is this is kind of a preference thing. You could generally start in any of those three areas, the construction, in other words, picking that part to work on first, and you're not gonna run into any problems or major snags. So myself, I always like picking the wing for the start point because I think the wing, you know, has got some great structure to it. It's fairly easy to start off, and I think it's kind of a great warm up type of build as you're constructing into the kit. So I'm going to start with the wing and uh, there's a couple other things that we need to discuss here really quick. One of them is that the method of building that I use, the board that I use, is a magnetic building board. Now it's not very common. Not everybody uses a magnetic building board to lay out their airplane. So that's just my preference. I will show you, I had a friend request, my buddy Jeff requested that I show you the method of uh, using a probably a more common, which would be to use like a, uh, a pin board where you're pinning the things to uh, the board, uh, the parts of the board and assembling them that way. I'll give you a brief synopsis of that, but then I'm gonna go back to using what I like to use, which is my magnetic board and uh, we'll go from there. Um, first thing I wanna do is kinda get this table cleared off of all the parts and uh, we'll start up. Okay, got a little bit of a mock-up here for you. This is a piece of what a lot of people would use as a building board. This is called, I think it's called Homosote. It's uh, pretty much just a bunch of packed fiber all smashed together and made into a board. This thing looks like it's about maybe three-eighths of an inch wide. And it's fairly lightweight. Um, very commonly used for building board. You could also use, I believe some people use like ceiling tile. Uh, you can get those ceiling tiles that they use in those uh, fall ceilings and offices. And I think another thing that a lot of people use is uh, just plain old gypsum drywall. And what it does is it makes a surface that you can lay down. It's flat. It's not flexible. So it's not going to be bending and, and stuff like that. And um, you could stick pins into it. That's the important part of it. So I'll show you now the way that this is usually done. I'll go ahead and do a close-up so you can see the way 
that uh, parts are pinned down onto a plan so that they could be, um, you know, put together and then glued. So that'll be the next step here. So let's go ahead and take that step next. First step is to go ahead and put the building board onto the surface we're going to be working on, which is the tabletop. This building board is nice and flat and very porous, so it can be used for uh, sticking these pins into like that. These are the best pins, by the way, these ones with the green handles on them. These little suckers are sharp, though. You've really got to be careful. But uh, anyways, I will see if I can find a link to point you to a place where you can get these because these are so much better than a lot of people will use uh, straight pins like they use for sewing and, and things like that. And they're okay, but these are fantastic when it comes to laying out airplanes. Building board is down, so the next part is to go ahead and put the plans over the top of them we'll roll those out and this is a section of the wing now I'm not going to lay it out properly but I'm going to show you how stuff gets stuck down to it first part that we need to stick down is the spar so going from the middle of the wing which is where we're at here I haven't built enough room off the end of my table here to hold this honking spar here we go all right, so what I've done here is I put the spar down onto the wing surface exactly in the position where it shows on the plan. We're gonna lay it out right over the top. So the next thing you do is you take these pins and you use them to hold down the spar in that position so it can't move. And the way you do it is by crossing them over like this. And this is not easy. <laughs> and that's why I don't use this. I like using the magnets instead. But you know, I'm doing this for you, Jeff. That's it. Okay, so the spar gets held down to the plan with the pins. Now the next thing we do is we start putting the ribs onto it. And the ribs we put right where they show on the plan here. So here's one. So we'll go ahead and start out at the very end, out here. You see the rib just goes right onto the spar, like that. There's the next one. And part of what we're doing here is we want to make sure that these ribs are perpendicular to the tabletop. So I will use a uh, small right angle that I have here to make sure that it's sticking perfectly straight up. And then we'll go ahead to make it so that it can't go anywhere. Put that actually through the rib so it holds it in that position. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if I'm close enough up for you to be able to see that, but I'll shoot some, uh, I'll shoot some pictures and then add those so you can see exactly where that goes. So now, in this case, this rib is perpendicular to the tabletop. It's got a little bit of wow back there, but that can be straightened up once we add the trailing edge to it. I'll go ahead and nail down two of these. So that we have those in place. Check that one as well. Okay. Now, as you've done this, you can see how the tails, the wood is wanting to wander, and, and that's okay because the next step is going to be we're going to put a trailing edge onto it 
and we'll just hold the trailing edge in position and then hit it with a piece uh, or hit it with some uh, cyan acrylic super glue which will instantly stick it to there and we can align it hit the glue to it and it will dry and hold that proper position of this uh, with the trailing edge on there but I'm just I'm still concentrating on just showing you how this would work if you were doing this with a pin board instead of the way that I'm going to do it because I'm going to redo this whole thing here all right so eventually say that we've gone down this whole line and added all the ribs in well the next step would be to add the top spar to it and it would be just very simply setting the top spar into it like so and hold that it would be draped across all of the ribs all the way down the wing and that's once it's in this position and you get everything fairly lined up you can go ahead and use your sand acrylic acid glue to structurally hold everything together um, it, it just structurally yeah you put glue on it that's what that is structurally hold everything together uh, you just go ahead and, and put the glue into the joints and it will wick into the joints and it will hold everything in position and you'll have a solid pieced wing uh, built in the traditional method using pin board and pins okay so enough of that I'm gonna take this all apart and we're gonna put it together the way that I want to do it now this is the way that I like doing it this is a piece of sheet metal I believe this is 24 gauge galvanized sheet metal I love that sound pretty cool and it's the base for what I use for my magnetic um, building board so the first step is to get that put down then next step is to go ahead and put the plans over the top of it and I'm gonna set these a little bit different method than we had it before because I want to get this thing right side up and I need the plan in to fit perfectly And then I'll just let the rest of it drape off the table behind me. The important thing is to make sure I got one end of the wing to the exact middle. One thing I'm going to do that's very different from the way that the author and the designer of the plan calls for is I am going to build this plain wing in two halves instead of uh, just a single piece like he does so he recommends that you lay the entire wing out on the table and uh, you know it's so basically joining it end to end as a single piece I'm not going to do that because I feel more comfortable if I could build a plane into two panels and then join them together I feel like I've got better control uh, making sure that everything fits up square and, and so forth so I'm just going to do one half at a time I'm going to be adding one rib to the middle to make sure that um, in fact I can see here he has two ribs in the middle anyways so turns out this is an option to do it this way to begin with so I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to do that I'm going to lay it out as two panels that I'm going to glue together eventually and these are the stars of the show these are cabinet magnets they use them in cabinet doors and uh, they're used to uh, keep the door shut so one would be on the door part and then there's usually a catch on the inside and, it, and that's what holds the door firmly closed use these all the way across here I use these just to anchor the plan down for right now but uh, anyways got a whole bunch of them and I'm going to put a link in the description down below if you're interested in building your own magnet board I mean it's it's not really super expensive because the magnets themselves are not that expensive and then going down to like a sheet metal or uh, HVAC place and buying a piece of sheet metal of the right size I think this one is 50 inches long by I think probably about two feet wide uh, and with that I've been able to do a majority of the work uh, for many of the different models that I've built it's a good size I like to use uh, cut right wax paper between the parts and the actual plan because I'm going to be putting a lot of glue onto the parts and it can drip onto the plan and, and kind of ruin 
the the plan if you get a bunch of glue on it. Plus, it could glue the plane to the plan, which I never want to do that. But this is a good uh, semi-transparent. I mean, you can see the plans clearly through it. You can read everything perfectly. So I'll use a couple pieces of wax paper here to act as a barrier between it. And stick those down with the magnets. I wanted to show you exactly how this all kind of goes together. I've got the uh, magnets holding down the plan, and then I've got a layer of wax paper over the top to protect the plan from uh, getting glue and stuff like that. And we are pretty much, with this configuration, ready to start putting the parts down. So I'll go ahead and set the camera down here. And uh, let me see if I can get the angle correct on here. Yeah, you can see the end of it right there. Okay, sounds or uh, looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's set the uh, spar down. So the nice thing about the magnets is... Now I just take this spar and I can lock it into position uh, without pinning or poking or anything like that. I'm just going to go ahead and set that there on one side of it. And what you want to do is you kind of want to put these, these are bays right here. So here's one rib, here's another rib. So I kind of want to do this magnet holding uh, right between there. So there, that is down and it's firm and it's in the right spot. And I've got this cord hanging down to fix that. Probably making some cool microphone noises. What do they call that? It, uh, I can't remember that extra sensory loud noise. All right, continuing on. I'm just kind of set these down here. The nice thing about these magnets is, I mean, there's lines that are on the plan here, and you could put the rear, or you could put the uh, spar right up to that line and stick a magnet there, and it's there. It's not going to move. It's not going to go anywhere. That's one of the reasons I really like using magnets. <laughs> 